Good morning, uh, distinguished friends. Uh, I will continue uh, telling you more about the homegrown projects and initiatives. Uh, you'll agree with me that uh, Dr. Hessa and Dr. Amar al Saadi have painted a very exciting picture of what's actually happening on the ground as opposed to plans and hopes and ambitions. I, I'm going to talk about three areas. Uh, the role of QSTP in the national innovation system, our research partnerships, and then I'll talk briefly about QSTP-led projects. So the Science and Technology Park was established to provide strategy and implementation of technology development in Qatar, an engine for accelerating research, much more than an incubator. I think that there is a misconception uh, of people who come from abroad that we are an incubator. We are much more than an incubator. We are a research accelerator, and I'll explain this as we go along. We support corporate R&D in line with the national goals, and we launch new knowledge-based industries. And clearly, uh, that all boils down to being a hub for innovation. QSTP spans the research and innovation value chain by linking early research with commercialization. We act as an interface between outputs of uh, uh, scientific research and its application. We manage uh, intellectual property uh, within the science park for the moment. And we engage in active network relationships. So you can see where QNRF begins and where it finishes, where universities begin and finish, and where we operate in, 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 the, in, in the landscape. Uh, we are focused in four theme areas. These are the areas that were laid out earlier today. Uh, and they are energy, environment, ICT, and health sciences. These are in line with the national vision. And what we try and do is to focus our efforts on the multidisciplinary areas which inevitably are at the boundaries of these. And you'll notice as I describe our projects, most of them happen to be at the intersection of one or many of these themes. Our research partnerships are very varied and, and extensive. We have Qatari partners such as Qatar University, Espital, Doha Land, Hama Med Medical Corporation. We have international partners such as Imperial College, the Fraunhofer, MD Anderson in the area of cancer and Biogem in Italy. Uh, we have members at QSTP and these are the multinationals and we'll talk about those. These are both international companies like GE or, or local homegrown companies like Green Gulf and Qatar Petroleum. We also have individual Qatari partners uh, who take part in QSTP and these are either fellows of, QS, uh, of QSTP, our board members and advisory uh, personnel. QSTP's capacity building program support applied R&D. This is a very exciting program where we create teams of young people around the outcomes of research partnerships. We engage the researchers and young graduates in technology innovation, and we generate entrepreneurship in, as, as a culture in the country. This project takes in about 20 to 30 people a year and has been extremely successful, and the majority of students who take part in these programs are Qatari students. Well, moving to the main themes of research, uh, clearly, as you heard from Dr. Amr al-Sadi, the uh, management, the, the strategic hydrocarbon assets is a priority. And we have a major program in geosciences and reservoir engineering with Shell, QP, and QSTP, whose ultimate aim uh, is to, to look at carbon sequestration in the depleted reservoirs in Qatar. The program focuses around geophysics and reservoir engineering. Of course, renewable energy is, is a, a vital area for us, and clearly uh, we need to focus. And we've chosen to go with solar because we have plenty of solar power. And, uh, in, and we've done this in two ways. We looked at the solar value chain and decided where could we make an impact. And clearly our whole philosophy has always been to work in projects where we bring something to the table, whether it's intellectual power or natural assets. And in solar power, the, the project uh, consists of uh, upstream uh, production of polysilicon. This is a raw material that goes into making photovoltaic cells. This is a very difficult industry to get into. It's, it's extremely expensive. It's a large chemical process. It's energy intensive and, and requires high investments. And that's exactly what Qatar is very good at. If you look at Rasifan, all our projects are large chemical projects. And we decided to enter this area 
uh, QSTP did the research, the, the scoping of the exercise, the pre uh, feasibility studies, the design studies, and then we created a company called QS Tech, which today is investing over $700 million in a polysilicon plant at Raslefan. Uh, solar power, uh, at the other extreme end of the value chain, is, is in useful in product producing energy. And what we are building uh, today is a demonstrator, and I'll talk more about the demonstrator in a moment. Of course, high-value oil and gas derivatives are vital to us as well. Uh, this, the analogy I always like to talk about is selling coffee beans. The, the farmers in Africa sell coffee beans for which they get very little money. Uh, the people who make the money are the, the people who package these in, in, in espresso capsules. The difference between a kilo of espresso capsules and, and a kilo of coffee beans is something like 500 to 1. So clearly it's in our interest to look at high value oil and gas derivatives. And these can be specialty chemicals, and one of the areas we're looking at is composite materials. And in January we'll be making a major announcement with a German group about the use of composite materials in industry. And, and there are other applications as well in, in the food and pharmaceutical industry. So what's our solar demonstrator about? It's an experimental facility to study the different solar to electricity conversion methods, and we're building a 500 kilowatt demonstrator. And, and the reason for this is that there are a vast number of technologies, even within photovoltaic, and they are impacted hugely by weather conditions. Uh, sunshine has a role clearly in, in photovoltaic, but the intensity is very important. And you need to understand the bandwidth at which the frequencies that you have to deal with. High temperature is an issue, as is dust. Dust causes havoc with solar panels. And one needs to develop, uh, firstly, one needs to understand the impact of dust. And secondly, you need to develop remedial measures. And that's what we have in mind. We have some 25 companies who have agreed to take part in this project. And phase one will be completed by 2011. And you can see a schematic diagram uh, in this uh, picture on, on the left. Uh, the, the two partners are Green Gulf, which is a local Qatari company we have created. The whole idea here is at the end of two or three years, the, the knowledge of, of how to manage solar power, what different technologies mean, will be in the hands of, of a Qatari company. And, and of course, we, we need to blend youth and uh, ambition with experience, and we were fortunate enough in that Chevron decided to join us in this project and contribute materially to the program. So the project is co-funded by QSTP and Chevron. And clearly, um, we've had a huge boost with the uh, awarding of the, the, the 2022 games because all the stadiums are going to need solar power. So we, we chose for once a technology that was the right time at the right place. Uh, some of you may have heard our Solar Carbon Black program. This was a program that was initiated by a brilliant young professor, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Nazreen, who worked uh, in this field in Stanford for her PhD and came to Texas A&M as a young professor. And she has a model where you can apply intense solar radiation to a, a reactor full of methane gas and directly break the gas into hydrogen and carbon. And her calculations were extremely compelling. And those of you who know Nazreen know she's extremely uh, persuasive lady, and the, the issue was how do we take this forward? How do we actually translate this into a, 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 a viable project? Building a demonstrator, if you have the funds, is, is easy, but what we wanted to do was to have some certainty about the translation process. So we talked to the best in the, in the field. The Fraunhofer Institute in Germany is probably the world's leading uh, mechanical, electrical engineering uh, research institute. And they were so fascinated by this project that they agreed to work with us. Uh, not only work with us, they provide half the funding. So this is a jointly funded project where half the money comes from QSTP and the other half comes from the Fraunhofer. Fraunhofer will build the, the lab scale reactors. They'll design the reactors based on Nazarene's calculations and uh, use laser radiation for the first phase of the project. If it all works out, and I'm sure it will, we'll build a full-scale demonstrator here powered by solar mirrors. And of course, the outcomes are vital 
the, uh, if, if they work hard, and this will be the production of carbon nanomaterials, and carbon nanoparticles are extremely useful uh, and have huge applications, as you can imagine. And hydrogen, of course, is an important energy source. Uh, this is a, a project which appeals to young people and is based on the Formula One technology developed by Williams. Williams developed, as part of it, their R&D program, an accelerator for racing cars. And the principle here is very simple. Instead of using simply a brake, uh, in addition to a brake, you have a flywheel, and the flywheel absorbs kinetic energy as you slow down or your car. And um, the technology is very clever. It has composite materials, which are embedded uh, with uh, iron filings, and as the wheel spins around, it creates a magnetic field, and hence you have an electric motor. And the idea by uh, uh, this research was to engage this wheel to accelerate the car, and the, 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 the flywheel is a small flywheel moving at something like 40,000 revolutions per minute, which is extremely fast, and you can imagine the technological problems around that. Uh, Williams uh, were persuaded by us, uh, fairly easily, I must add, to, to, to do the opposite problem, which was to see whether the flywheel in a larger scale could be used for energy conversion. As you can imagine, when you have a large train or a truck, as it starts and stops, a huge amount of energy is used in starting and stopping a truck or a train. And if you have a flywheel that every time you start and stop, you uh, engage the flywheel, you build up inertial energy, kinetic energy. And this can then be used for starting a heavy vehicle once it's stopped. And so this project uh, has now been agreed. The facility is ready, and Williams have started the, the experimental work. And, and the idea is that we will use these flywheels not only in trains and buses, but also in elevators. All these high-rise buildings, as the elevator comes down, the wheel will spin around at the bottom, build up kinetic energy, and when you're ready to go up, it'll engage and push you up again. Energy benefits of the order of 20 to 30 percent with ease. And, and I think this is an exciting area, not only for the applications I've mentioned, but also for futuristic applications when smart grids come into operation. Smart grids are, are the flavor of the month in electrical engineering, and, and the issue there is to compensate periods of low energy or, or high demand, and the flywheel is an excellent example for doing that. Water is, of course, the lifeblood of a country like uh, Qatar because uh, without water you can't survive, and the bulk of the water in this country is uh, desalinated. Almost 99.95% is desalinated water. So we have two or three major initiatives underway. Uh, one is a, a, a center that's been established by Canoco Phillips and GE on the reuse of water. I don't know if many of you know that when you're drilling for oil, for every barrel of oil you bring out, you contaminate three barrels of uh, pure water. This is uh, drinkable water that gets contaminated. The idea then is to see how the contaminated water can be cleaned and purified and reused. And, and stage one, uh, the results are looking extremely exciting. And, and the, the idea here is to be able to use this water for gardening initially, for cleaning road surfaces. And I'm told by the scientists that the water is clean enough to drink, and, and they even drink it when you go to their labs. Uh, ExxonMobil have also announced a major advanced technology initiative in water, several million dollar program, and we look forward to that with great excitement. In synthetic fuel, you've heard plenty of presentations. This is the gas to liquids fuel program, and uh, this is amazing in, in the sense that airplanes can and do fly on GTL. There was a Qatar Airways flight that flew from London to, to Doha, which had half its fuel as GTL. And when the new airport in Doha opens, the only fuel that airplanes will be able to take up will be GTL fuel. And that's our contribution to the environmental uh, program that's necessary in this country. We're working on recycled polymers. And of course, air quality monitoring is, is a huge issue, not only the dust from the desert, but a large amount of pollutants that come out of some of the refinery processing uh, needs to be managed. Total from France have a, a major initiative in this area and a lab which uh, is, is, uh, has all the latest equipment and some very talented young people. And of course there's a, a program 
uh, you, I think, may have heard about yesterday on modular and sustainable housing being carried out by VCU and QSTP. Biofuels are, of course, uh, of great interest, and you might ask, why on earth are we looking at biofuels in Qatar when we have so much oil and, oil and gas? The reason is very simple. We have an airline, a very successful airline called Qatar Airways, and every time Qatar Airways will fly over Europe or the U.S. In two, from two years' time, from, I believe, 2013 or 2014, it will pay a penalty unless it has a biofuel. We did a very interesting exercise with Qatar Airways, and the outcome of that exercise was that over 10 years, the cost of penalties alone would be over $2 billion. And it occurred to us that for $2 billion, we may be able to have our own facility for generating biofuels. Biofuels, as you know from algae, rely on sunshine, CO2, and salt water. And we have all three of those ingredients in this country. So Qatar Airways uh, and Airbus and QSTP have launched a major program at, at Qatar University to look at aqua bio, uh, algae biofuels. Health sciences is a very tough area for a small country with a tiny population, and our whole approach here is to focus on research and, and uh, the development of platforms as opposed to doing work on, on uh, drug discovery. We have established a robotic surgery center, and I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Uh, we're doing some very exciting work on mammography with GE. We have a proteomics lab that's up and running. We're working with desert plants uh, with Qatar University where we know, even going back to the Quran, that there are certain desert plants which have remedial properties. And the issue is, which are those uh, plants and what exactly makes them contribute to the, to, to the, the effect? And we have also set up a stem cell bank which will open in January this year, coming year. So the robotic center is probably um, the only one in the world which is focused purely on robotics for surgical applications. Most uh, hospitals today, when, if they are modern enough, have a robot, but they don't have a separate lab for, robotic, for development of robotic surgery. We took the initiative to become a center in the Middle East, and we have uh, set up a center. And the center will have two major functions. One is training uh, the surgeons in Qatar and in the region, and to develop R&D programs. The facility is now fully functional. Uh, we've had 24 full training days between October and December alone this year of, of, of um, surgeons, and these surgeons were Qatari surgeons and surgeons from the region. Uh, we have several R&D programs underway. In fact, the latest count I had from, uh, from my team was that we have nine projects underway with leading hospitals in, in Switzerland, in Lebanon, in, in the US, and, and the UK. Uh, the project with GE, this is very important because breast cancer is a major issue in the region. And simple uh, mammography doesn't work because of the dense tissue. And a very simple approach was thought of by a scientist at GE, which was to take a picture of uh, a normal mammography and then inject, take a second picture after injecting a dye and look at the contrast between the two. And the, issue, and the simple uh, physics behind it is that cancer cells uh, light up literally because a lot of blood flows to them and if you have a dye in the bloodstream you can you can pick it up very quickly now for some strange reason uh, GE didn't want to fund this on their own and we took a gamble to, to, to jointly fund this project with GE and I can, I can tell you within 18 months we have spectacular results this project has de uh, not only did we fund it we put people to work on it as well and we we have results which are extremely uh, rewarding the two trials have been done, one in Germany and one in the US, and GE already have seven or eight orders for this new equipment. So basically it takes the existing equipment, you add a little bit more uh, computing power to, to your system, you inject a dye in the patient, and, and the, the, the tumors light up. And this basically avoids the painful process of having to go through a, a long waiting period, doing biopsies, uh, and using uh, sonar techniques, and, and ultimately MRIs, which are very time-consuming. 
and, and we look forward to this being developed and it will be trialed out in uh, Hamad uh, in, in this coming year. The cosmetics project at Qatar University is, is unique, as I mentioned earlier, and the proteomics lab is, is working very closely with Qatar University to identify the, the protein structures that impact the outcome of our results. Stem cell banking, I won't talk long about. This is an interesting initiative where the cord blood stem cells uh, are stored. Uh, we managed to persuade Virgin Health to move their worldwide headquarters from the UK to, to Qatar. They're now here. We own a third of this, but we run it as a Qatari enterprise. Its team, uh, the team is at QSTP, and the, um, the facility, the cryogenic facility, will be completed uh, by January. Uh, until the, the facility is completed, all the, um, the samples were stored in the UK. And we went through very complex procedures uh, with the immigration and customs people to make sure that the samples could leave the country and eventually come back uh, when, when our facility is ready. The facility is now available to mothers who uh, give birth to babies in Hamad and Al Ali Hospital, and in fact all the hospitals in Doha. The idea here is to widen the reach of this uh, to, to uh, surrounding countries like Bahrain, Kuwait and Abu Dhabi. And the benefits, of course, uh, you all know, uh, and, and I'll, I'll mention in the slide, these stem cells can be used for the treatment of uh, leukemias and lymphomas and um, thalassemia, sickle cell, which is very common in this part of the world. Delta Dot is our proteomics lab. It has three major programs underway. Um, one is with MD Anderson's on breast cancer, looking at um, biomarkers. The second one is, as I mentioned earlier, on cosmetics from desert plants. And finally, we're also working closely with uh, Espita on detecting uh, drugs that are injected by athletes and sports stars. And again, the World Cup will be a major boost to us because we will have uh, the state-of-the-art equipment here and a defining set of equipment which uh, sets the standards at a very high level. Qatar University uh, has a wireless center at QSTP. This was a, a move we made, and this is a lovely story. When I first came, um, Qatar University wanted to put one person uh, to act as a uh, technology transfer officer in QSTP. And after about two hours when they left, we had agreed to set up a major wireless center in 500 meters, square meters of lab space. And this is one of the most exciting homegrown projects I can think of, where something like 40, 35 or 40 people are intensely involved in generating uh, outcomes. And I have a picture here of uh, a traffic system that's being developed, which will be implemented very shortly. Now, diabetes and uh, cardiovascular diseases have been talked about a great deal, and um, we wanted to see how we could contribute to this. There are a vast number of sensors being developed, very exciting sensors that look, and miniaturized sensors, which look at physiological parameters such as heart rate, uh, the amount of energy you spend, your blood pressure, and these are either implantable or they can be worn as wristbands or on your chest. Or, and, and we felt this was an area worth getting into it, but not at the sensor level. The thing that was missing was the communications tools. All these sensors have different technologies for, for transmitting data. And, and the, the secret was to find a platform that could be totally universal and, and accept any sensor. So over the last 18 months, two years, we've developed a, a platform they can, that can take almost 20 or 25 different sensors which work on different standards. And we have been running some prototyping projects and we have had a very successful project where we monitored some 700 children with, es with Espita uh, in Doha and uh, these kids had a, 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 a wristband given to them and a, a monitor for 24 hours a day for a month. And we were able to see how much energy they spent, how, how much they slept, and how much they ran around. And this uh, data was analyzed with respect to their own characteristics, such as weight and, and level of obesity. And we are hoping to take this project to Italy very soon to work with the Vodafone Foundation. We've also been working with uh, Qatar Airways on pilot fatigue using uh, spectacles. These are glasses which look at the movement of the eye and their algorithms which can translate uh, the, the movement of the eye and the, the, 
the condition of your eye into a fatigue. And this project has had a very interesting start. We've got some nice results, and the idea is to make this an airline standard for, for pilots. We're also working with uh, Shell on uh, workers who work in extreme conditions in, in this country. You, you, most of you who live here will know that in the summer you can get temperatures of 40 to 50 degrees easily, and these poor guys have to work in intense heat, and, and we're going to be monitoring their physiological parameters. We've had great success for those who love racing with the Honda motorcycle racing team who use our platform and, uh, to measure their body uh, parameters such as heart rate and, and temperature. And this was monitored simultaneously in three countries. What the race took place in Monte Carlo and measurements were made in Japan, Doha and, and London. And, and we were able to get high degree of accuracy of, of the parameters that these guys were going through during the racing process. So, so really this is a platform and the whole idea is to start commercializing this and for different areas you'll have different partners in the sports field and for sports performance uh, the natural partners will be people like Nike and Adidas for healthcare it will be people like Siemens or GE so really the, the next stage now is to take what we've done as a proof of concept to take it to, to commercialization. Finally, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about our project in, uh, in translation. And as you've heard over the last uh, day and a half, this is a very important area. And, and the reason we've embarked on this project is, uh, is not only the richness of, of uh, literature there is and, and paintings, but because we want to make sure that the Arabic language flourishes in its, in its best form. So what we have today and have developed in, in the, the past few months is a systems integration approach by bringing the best of breed in some of the areas we, we needed to, to use and, and the technologies we had to use. So we have advanced software technologies to create a virtual library of ancient and modern text in Arabic and English. The platform is used for translating text to text and text to speech. And the first book was already been done. We, we had our highness who came to QSTP recently and we gave her a gift of a book we had translated from Latin to Arabic automatically. We are partnering with Aspitar, the kind of museum authority, uh, the, the state television uh, TV station in Italy, uh, Rai, and Sheikh Hassan Al Thani's private library to, to look at how we can translate some of these uh, very valuable books from English to Arabic or Arabic to English, both in text and speech form. So really the benefits are obvious and uh, we look forward to individual researchers and universities who are in this country to work with us to enhance and enrich this platform. And I'd like to finish with uh, a simple demonstration. I hope it works. And this is a text that was put on the computer. Operation. نريد لشعبنا أن يشكل ركيزة الأساسية لدولة قطر ونحن نعمل على ضمان بروز قادة جدد من مختلف الأجيال المتعاقبة. So all you had to do here was to type in the Arabic text and out came a speech in both English and Arabic. So what does this mean to the workforce at QSTP? We have um, 91% are non-Qatari employees in the science park of about 850-900 people. 9% are Qataris. While in QSTP, in my team, we have 68% non-Qataris and 32% Qatari employees. And clearly, I wanted to show you this because these numbers need to be improved dramatically over the next coming years. The whole point of QSTP and the foundation doing what it's doing is to make sure that the Qatari engagement increases and increases dramatically over the next few years. We have a large number of engagements. Um, we have over 100 active relationships, some 43 with uh, members of QSTP. These are the people who are uh, working at QSTP, and, and you can see the breakdown. So finally, in, in summary, we're, I hope you have been convinced we are playing a key role in the national innovation system. We're supporting national goals through focus on specific applied research themes, and we're creating a growing number of international research partnerships. And we are establishing a portfolio of applied research projects. We have 41 licensed entities at QSTP, 
a 101 research partnerships directly addressing the needs of Qatar, 914 staff employed in the science park. And the Qatari representation is growing, and I hope it will grow even faster with time. Thank you.